Hi there. Hello. I'm BJ Daniels. I'm one of the doctors here in clinic. Sorry, let me just clean my hands. Okay. And you're Mr. Hansen, is that yes, right? Call yes, Tim. You, oh, you go by Tim? Perfect. Okay. Um, so I noticed, sorry, how old are you? 54. 54, okay. And I noticed on the board the reason you're here is you're having troubles with sleep. Is that yeah, right? Yeah. Okay. I, I, I'm not sleeping well. I, uh, it's affecting my work and my marriage. I'd, I'd like to get it oh, looked okay. at. It's, I hope I'm not being foolish, but I, I, I'm alarmed. <laughs> okay. Well, you know what? Uh, like, if it's affecting you, that's absolutely a great reason to be here, and I'm glad that you've come in because we want to talk about this and figure this out. Okay. okay. So when can you maybe tell me, was your sleep okay? When can you remember being okay? More than a year ago. Okay. Um, I started noticing it about this time last year. And then I'm a teacher, and, and at the end, I thought it would go away. I thought I would sleep better over the summer because school was over, mm -hmm. and the school year ended, and it just continued. And then it's, it's the accumulation. It's not particularly gotten worse. It's just more of it, and I'm getting... You're getting quite behind on sleep. Impatient, yeah. Okay. And what do you teach? Mathematics, high school. Okay, great. Um... So anything happen a year ago around when this started? Any life event, family or work? Not that I can recall. No event. Okay. Okay. I thought about that, and I don't think so. No. Okay. Um, and with the sleep, what time do you go to bed? 10 o'clock. Okay. And get up at 6. Six. So eight hours a night. That's pretty good. I thought so. Well, I'm in, that's why, I, once I started noticing, I really made an effort to go to bed at 10. And I'm when not, you wake up in the morning, do you feel refreshed? No, I don't feel like I've slept at all. I could okay. sleep another eight hours. Okay, that's good to know. And on weekends? I don't get much chance to sleep in. I'm, we're always Busy. doing something. Right. But uh, it's the same during the weekends, pretty okay. much. Okay, so it sounds like you have a good quantity of sleep, so it probably suggests something going on with the quality. Are you having any troubles falling asleep? No. No, okay. So once your head hits the pillow, uh, pillow sorry, you're pretty much out. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. Um, all right. Uh, at night, uh, does your wife ever tell you you do anything different in terms of snoring well, or she's waking up? Or I so snore. Everybody okay. knows. Everybody in the family knows. It's a family joke. I snore. Okay. Um, and I've done that for years. But lately, my wife has started nudging me because she thinks I stopped breathing. Oh, okay. And uh, and then I'll I I'll, I'll turn over. Or I'll just go to sleep. I don't remember it. I I know it happens though. Mm -hmm. On occasion, not often, but on, on occasion, I've, I've kind of gasped myself awake. Mm. And, uh, and I know that, you know, kind of thing. And, uh, and so I know it's happening, mm -hmm. but I don't remember it. And I'm always alive the next morning, so I assume I've been breathing in the night. Right. Okay. Yeah, no, no, I understand that. Um, so what you're describing is something that we actually call sleep apnea. Have you ever heard of that? No. No. Oh, okay. Uh, it's a condition where people can often wake up at night choking or wake up several times a night, like sometimes almost every few minutes, where their brain is asleep and slightly wake up to get their breathing going and they fall back asleep and they wake up to get their breathing going and fall back asleep. Constantly. <clears throat> Constantly without noticing it. That's, yeah, that, that sounds like me. Yeah. Although I, <laughs> like I say, I don't remember it very well. Right. I'm only trying to reconstruct what I've been told. Right. Yes, and that's, uh, it sounds like that's what you have, but I'm going to ask you a few more questions to kind yeah. of figure out why you might have that. So how is, and this is related to the sleep apnea, which is why I bring it up, how has your weight been over the last five years? I've gained some, I, I've gained weight. I'm in my 50s, I, I, suddenly I'm just gaining weight. I, uh, Suddenly, or well, not not no. Over time, you know, okay. it's I'm just fat. <laughs> I never was before, and right. I, I. But I'm not. I don't. I haven't skied for a long time, and I haven't uh, had a lot of exercise, and so I'm. I'm I, I always felt like my work because I teach high school, and I'm mm -hmm. always on my feet, and I'm going from class to class, or class to class is coming in, and I. I never felt. 
I thought that was my exercise, but apparently uh, it's not enough. Yeah. And I don't have a regular exercise regimen uh, outside of that. Okay. So it does sound like you've been fairly active at work as you've always been. Well, but you have to be. maybe some of the recreational things like skiing and whatnot, you're doing a bit less of. Yeah, I used to play handball in my 30s and 40s, but I don't even, I haven't done oh, that okay. in a long time. So I think we have a good reason why you might have gained weight combined with getting older, our metabolism slows down. Um, so that m- might be related to this. So I'll explain everything about sleep apnea at the end, but I just want to make sure I don't forget to ask some of the key questions. Um, when you wake up, you said you're not refreshed. You did mention this is affecting kind of your wife and your job. Tell me more about that. My wife stays awake after she thinks I'm not breathing. My wife stays awake thinking she has to catch it. And I'm not sleeping well. Mm -hmm. And then she's not sleeping well. And so uh, save our marriage. (laughs) But how is it affecting at work? You mentioned that as well. Uh, Well, I, I guess I'm cranky. My kids say I'm cranky. I... I don't know. I don't. I, I. I. would like to take a nap during the day, and I don't. Okay. Well, I mean, you can't. You, right. you can't. Right. But I just feel drowsy all the time, and it, it makes me. Do you find your concentration is affected a bit as a result? Well, of it that? takes more time. It takes more effort to concentrate. I'm still able to. Right. But I mean, I have to focus in on, on the class, for instance. I really have to remind myself because otherwise, I'm just doing it by rote. And I, I can concentrate if I focus on it. Okay, okay. But it does take more time, and I thought that was ind- indicative of age, rather than my sleep. But I, I see, I see now there could be a correlation. Mm-hmm. And people, as they build up that sleep deficit, as we call it, they can actually fall asleep at weird times. So I'm just going to list off a bunch of things. And again, this is not, you're not being judged. No, no, but go this ahead. This is very important that I know. Do you ever fall asleep while reading a book? I rarely read a book. I re- I'm usually doing. Or just watching TV. No, I don't. I, I, yeah, I have friends who do, you know, fall asleep in a movie. Never, I don't do that. It's okay. just not, I okay. don't, something I do. So it's unlikely that you're going to say yes to any of these other questions, but if you do, I do need to know. In the middle of a conversation or while teaching a class, have you ever no, fallen asleep? No, no. If okay. you do that, you lose them. Right. And most importantly, while driving, have you ever fallen asleep? No. At the wheel? No. Okay. Okay. No, I'm pretty good about that. Okay. So you obviously do have some chronic fatigue due to lack of sleep, but it's not gotten to the point that it's like causing serious, like it's causing issues, but like, as you can understand, falling asleep at the wheel would be oh, that, yeah. very serious. All yeah, right. I don't want that. To stop, yeah. Please stop me before no. it does. All right. Uh, I'm just going to ask you some of the routine questions now. Uh, the nurse said that you have a bit of mild high blood pressure. Yeah. Hi- and you're yeah, on a medication. Uh, Hi- hyper, uh, hi- hypo. Hydrochlorothiazide? Hydro, thank you. Okay. What you said. Anything else? Any over-the-counter no, no. herbals? No. Okay. Any allergies? No. Anything that run in the family? Well, no. Uh, snoring. But no heart disease, strokes, cancers, nothing like that. No, not that I'm aware. And these are just routine questions, so I don't no. make sure I don't miss anything. No. And again, have to ask these questions. Do you drink alcohol? No. Uh, do you smoke at all? No. And again, have to ask any street drugs, illicit drugs, anything like that? No. Okay. Okay. So based on what I'm hearing, I'll sort of summarize. A year ago, you were doing well, and this is when this started to happen. And you've just been continuously having a lack of feeling refreshed in the morning despite sleeping eight hours. Yeah. It sounds like you snore, have what we call apneic spells. You stop breathing. And this is what your wife has said. And you sometimes wake up gasping. Yeah. Um, this is obviously taking quite a toll. You're a bit more cranky. Your wife's not sleeping well. You know, it's affecting your concentration. And I think what you have is something called sleep apnea, which, as I said, is a condition where at night we're not breathing properly. And it's largely related to just gaining a little bit of extra weight. Okay? Cool. Yeah. And so what happens is at night, is as we're lying on our back or however, as we sleep, what can actually happen is our throat can kind of almost close in a little bit and prevent the breathing. Um, but there are ways we can investigate it, and there are very good treatments for it. So if this is the cause... You can cure it? We can fix it. 
Okay. Okay. How? So what we're going to do? Pill? <laughs> there's no pill. <laughs> but what I'm going to do is first things first. Uh, you should talk to your wife. Maybe we should set a whole separate visit just to talk about weight loss strategies. Okay. But I'll set up at least a referral to our dietitian to start. I'm going to send you to a lung specialist, but it's not a problem with your lungs. But the lung specialist is the one who would order a test to look at how your breathing is doing at night. It's called a sleep study. Okay. Oh. So they're going to arrange an appointment for a sleep study, and then you'll see the lung specialist afterwards to get the results and decide what's the next uh, step. There's a few options. A mask you wear at night that helps your breathing at night. Um, sometimes a surgery, sometimes there's a dental appliance, but definitely weight loss is one of the best things that can help. Okay. okay. Um, so again, to summarize, I think what you have, most likely, like I'm fairly confident I know what you have, and it's very treatable. Um, is there anything else you wanted to cover today or any other questions you have? No. What's the next step, the lung doctor? Yes. The, his office will, his or her, depending who I send you to, they'll contact you with the time for the sleep study. How long until, how, how, how long until things change for me? Yeah. Uh, once you start on the, whatever therapy we decide to go with, be it the mask, uh, at first, the mask can be uncomfortable, but within a week or two, people get used to it, and they're feeling tons better almost instantaneously once they're sleeping through the night properly. So okay. It'll take a few months to get all the tests done and get everything set up, but once we start therapy, it's very quick that you'll feel better. Is there something I can do in the meantime? Just weight loss. All right. Okay. Well, then I'll, we need to talk to my wife. She'll help me. Okay. All right, well, it was nice to meet you. Oh, hey, nice yes. to meet you. Thank you very much. Yes. I, I'm relieved that, that it's something uh, concrete rather than a figment of my imagination. Right. All right, you have yourself a nice day. Thank you. We'll see you.